Hi guys, how are you doing? Nick Janice from Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. It's Monday, we're doing the thing that we do on Mondays, which is hang out and talk about the guitar. Today, we are continuing our discussion on the style, the technique, the note choice, all that good stuff of the inimitable Richie Cotson, who is, as I'm sure you guys are aware, one of my all-time favourite Mount Rushmore guitar players. Had a huge pivotal effect on me uh, as a young Nick. So very excited to share some stuff with you guys today. The reason we're doing this once again is because we uh, we did a stream on Richie last week and because there's so much to cover, it kind of went by at a little bit of a, oh, I don't know, let's say uh, a, a, a blistering pace. So what we're gonna do this week is I wanted to take another hour and go over some of the topics that we discussed last week in greater detail. We've got some new stuff too as well. So some new stuff that we didn't cover last week, but I wanted to get a little bit deeper into some of the topics from last week. We've got some tab for you guys as well, because you asked, ask, and you shall receive. We got some tab. I will show you that, especially for the licks from last week. Um, if we do any cool new stuff this week, I'll be sure to tap it out too. Uh, and that will be available in the Guitar Interactive Livestream Hub, which is a private Facebook group where you will be able to find all sorts of cool stuff. You'll be able to share videos of your playing. We've got some cool videos of people posting videos of their bands and all that stuff. We like a bit of that. Anyway, listen, uh, before we get too off into the weeds about that stuff, I want to thank you for coming on board. It is great to have you along. We do love doing these streams. I have a great time every Monday. Look forward to it all the time because we have a lovely community here of uh, streamers and uh, guitar players who kind of come together to help each other and support each other. It's a very, very cool thing. We like it an awful lot. So if it's your first time tuning in, I want to thank you for taking the chance on us and uh, joining us for a hopefully informative lesson that we're going to have a load of good stuff for you. Hopefully you'll come away from this with something very, very cool that you can use in your own playing. Also, uh, if you are one of our returning community of streamers, it is great to see you. Thank you so much for coming back. We're going to check in with our stream in just a second. But before we do that, a little bit of housekeeping. A couple of ways you can help us keep the lights on. I've been battling with these colored lights over here. Um, it's been an absolute pain in the neck, let me tell you. Um, I don't know why, they just didn't want to work today. So if you want to help me keep the lights on and keep fighting the good fight against the colored lights so I'm not just a guy with black hair and a black shirt against a black background, uh, <laughs> you can do the following. You can go to this URL down here, which is uh, guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI plus. See this logo up here? That's the GI plus logo. You can go there. You can get more guitar lessons from the likes of myself, from Andy James, Rick Graham, Tom Quayle, Giorgio Cerci, Michael Caswell. Uh, who else do we have? We have uh, Don Alder in there, Manelli Jamal doing some acoustic stuff. Uh, it's deep and it is broad and we cover everything from jazz to fusion to metal, rock, beginner stuff into music immediate stuff, you name it, uh, whether you want theory, technique, uh, song learning ideas, all that good stuff. We do have that too. We've got Sam Bell's uh, fantastic series, The Bluffer's Guide to Being in a Covers Band, which we like an awful lot. So other ways that you can help us keep the lights on is if you are watching this on YouTube, you can give us a thumbs up. You're watching on Facebook, you can hit that heart emoji, the love icon, which really does help the algorithm. And of course, my favorite one, you can give us a comment because we love your comments. We're going to be answering your questions at the top of the well say the top of the hour it's going to be in about 40 minutes time when we're answering your questions live on camera so if you have questions don't forget drop them down below so we love your questions drop them in the comments uh we'll get in touch with that in just a second but before we do one other thing to share with you guys uh is if you're not already subscribed to the lick library guitar uh, youtube channel Make sure you get yourself over there. I'll be doing a live webinar with Lick Library tomorrow night, uh, which is tomorrow, Tuesday night. That is going to be 7 p.m. UK time. So it's an hour earlier than we do the GI streams. Uh, it's going to be over on the Lick Library YouTube channel. Uh, hopefully I will see you then. I'm looking forward to that an awful lot. It's going to be a 30 minute webinar on choosing the right lessons for you. It's going to be on the Lick Library YouTube channel. You'll be able to find that. Uh, Sam Bell does them too. Danny Gill. There's going to be loads of good ones going on. Anyway, listen, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the stuff we've got on the menu today. So let's very quickly take a second, get in touch with our community of streamers. Let's see who's in the house, uh, who we've got. So uh, we have, let's see, uh, Marcin is first through the door. Marcin, it's great to see you. Marcin was notably absent last week because he's off doing musician things, uh, which we love to hear. Marcin's joined a band. Uh, he's going to be playing some shows, uh, hopefully around his home. Maybe you'll bring your band uh, into the UK and we can come and see you. That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. Uh, Marcin's also got brand new guitar. 
uh, which, well, I'll say brand new. You've said it for a while now, uh, but there is some discussion around Marcin's PRS uh, in the comments. I am, as I'm sure you can tell, a PRS fan, so we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, PJ says, uh, lol, I tried to get first through the door. Um, oh, pipped by three minutes. Hi, I'm Marcin, Nick, and all. PJ, it's great to see you. Uh, who else do we have in the house? Oh, hope the photo shoot went well. Uh, I also hope the photo shoot went well. We'd love to see some photos. If you want to share some links to the photos, Marcin, that would be killer. We'd love to see that. Uh, who else do we have? Timothy Appling is in the house. Timothy, it is great to see you. Uh, Sacred God Slayer is here. Again, wouldn't be a stream without you guys. Our regular, regular community. We love having you guys on board. Uh, who else do we have in the house? So we've got some discussion uh, around. Um, let me, I think I've backed out of this. Oh, here we go. Marcin says, thanks. All went good. We have two gigs at the end of July. So it's very exciting. That's amazing, man. I'm really pleased to hear that. Uh, make sure when you do these two gigs, make sure you get some video and you post it in the Guitar Interactive live stream hub. I'd love to see that. That'd be great. Uh, <clears throat> Timothy Appling, anyway, says, uh, Marcin, that sounds great, man. Playing in front of people who like to hear you play is one of the best feelings and a job you don't mind going to. I can 100% agree with that, man. There is literally nothing better. Any day that you spend playing your guitar, the worst day playing your guitar is better than the best day doing anything else, let me tell you. Uh, who else do we have? Larry Warren is here. Larry, it's great to see you. Hi, guys. Really enjoyed last week's stream, uh, last week's session, rather. Looking forward to today. I'm looking forward to today, too, man. We're going to take a deeper dive into this stuff. Uh, who else do we have? Keith MOF is here. He's asking about uh, Marcin's PRS, uh, to which we have. It's Stella. Tone, playability, feel, so much mojo in that axe. Can agree, can confirm. This is my number one PRS that we brought out today. It's my only red guitar. Um, I have a lot of black guitars, and this is kind of by accident. It's not really by design. Um, I bought one, and then I ended up buying a second. And then I had three PRS, two of which were black, and I'm like, well, this is what we do now. I had the opportunity to buy a third and a fourth, and they ended up in black. So I have four black PRS, but this is my red guitar. Uh, and this guitar just has something a little bit magical about it. Um, it's uh, doesn't really have too much of a right to. Um, it's a 2002 um, Custom 22, you guys know this already, with a set of hand-wound uh, Bulldog pickups, uh, which is my friend Hayden Minette uh, wound these. They're fantastic pickups. We have no idea what they are, and I won't let him take them apart to find out, uh, because they will let the magic out. The genie will escape. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry. Uh, who, else we, who else do we have? Daryl Queen is here. Uh, hello, everyone. I missed last week's due to Memorial Day grilling duties. Man, I hope you grilled up some uh some delicious treats um i am jealous right i'm actually a little bit hungry right now so um you know and we're gonna we're gonna move on from the discussion of grilling uh happy memorial day for the other day though um it's uh, good of you to join us this week great to have you on board uh who else do we have in the house mark crandall is here mark it's great to see you uh rory lisbon is here always one with great insights uh i love the insight that you guys have um from the comment section we'd love to see it so if you've got questions you got anything you want to talk about let us know in the comments uh crank Tom says hi to the international guitar freaks community and Nick. I like that. Can I be involved in that? I don't think that's, this has to be an and Nick. I think that can be part of that too. Uh, last week's stream was extremely packed with great stuff. There can't be much left for today. Believe me, there is a deep well of uh, of stuff with Richie. Let me tell you. Um, who else do we have now? It's Mark McNish. We've already said hello to you. Mark, it is great to see you. Uh, very kind words. I really do appreciate that. Really do appreciate that. Daryl Queen uh, quite rightly says uh, you could spend years studying Richie and only scratch the surface yep for sure that's me man um spent years studying richie and i feel like i've only crashed this scratched the surface uh tim Leonard's in the house tim is uh a friend of mine a student uh of mine as well um he's a vocal and production student of mine uh very very talented young man he's got some music coming out soon uh tim if you are uh tim's watching on my facebook i think uh if i'm not mistaken tim post some links to some of your music uh and we'll get that shared in the stream because you guys should go and listen to it it's uh it's wild um, but it's good. So anyway, who else do we have in the house? David Yates is here. Uh, evening, uh, Nick, evening, guys. David, it's great to see you uh, fresh from the gym. Uh, fellow meathead as you can tell hope those hands are treating you well man i know you are on the road to recovery and we're glad to hear it so you know let us know how you're getting on uh always love to see it. my friend liam is here uh hey neko burks in this is liam liam is literally the greatest guy he is uh the i say is he still is right he still is and will be when we get the band back on the road but he is the uh the tour manager for my band saints of arcadia um great dude will do anything for you and is an 
absolute joy to be around. Liam, I'm looking forward to catching up with you very, very soon. We've got some weddings that we're both going to attend. It's going to be lovely. Uh, uh, Cranky Tom says, I'm home on Thursday, but I'm traveling to Newcastle in Scotland. That is my neck of the woods. Uh, hey, man, you know you want some recommendations of places to go? Hit me up. I will point you in the direction of some fantastic places to go and eat and drink and some wonderful sights to see. You might think about taking a food tour while you're here. We've got some great food. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you more about that later on. Uh, meet and greet with Nick. I think he lives there. I do live there. You're right. Uh, Response Audio says, yay, hello from Canada. Response Audio is great to see you. We love our Canadian viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, Nev says, thank you for doing these. Nev, that's really kind of you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Loving these cots and classes, says Ergo Hog. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Luis Rios, it's good to see you. Uh, howdy, indeed. Kim is in the house. Kim, it's great to see you. I'm going to see you tomorrow night on the Lick Library stream, too. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Marcy, never actually had a black guitar odd thing. Black guitars are great until you come to shoot videos on black backdrops and then they become a pain in the neck uh let's see um let's see anyway uh mark brim says can't wait to see the saints again mark is a great friend fabulous photographer right just like world-class outrageous photographer great bass player lovely dude has a, a great collection of aria basses uh which we love to see anyway listen you got any questions for me drop them in the comment section we are going to get straight down to the meat of things before we do just want to take a quick second and show you guys this. This is the tab from last week's stream. So we're gonna show you this just on camera very, very quickly. Uh, let me grab the screen share real quick. Uh, so if you want, uh, let's see, let's share a, the entire screen. Let's share that one there. Very good. Okay, so these are the tabs from last week's licks. If you wanna screenshot this, this might be the time to do it. So I'm just gonna hold this up on camera for now, just for a quick second. The licks in question, we're in the key of C minor. What we had was we had a series of arpeggios, uh, which is the very top uh, line, where we had this business. We're gonna delve more depth into that in today's stream. These are the famous REH arpeggios. And then at the top we had the, on the next row rather, we had the Kotzen Rudman, which was this business, this. talking a little bit about that rudiment. So you don't need to learn that lick in full. If you want to get that tab, again, you can go back and you can uh, you can check that out either by kind of going back to this video, you can screenshot, you can watch that as many times as you want. This will be available on the replay on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel. Give us a, a subscribe, rather, if, uh, if you haven't done so already. But also, um, this is available in the Guitar Interactive live stream hub, which is our private Facebook group. You can go and check that out with some links that are going to be posted in the comments uh, in just a moment. Dead easy. Guitar Interactive live stream hub. You'll find it on Facebook. We'll post the tab in there. Uh, anyway, listen, so moving on from that, just a second, I want to talk to you guys about that Richie Cotton rudiment and go a little bit deeper with this. So the Richie rudiment, uh, if you want to call it that, is this... Um, I was going to say it's an arpeggio. It's not really an arpeggio. It could be considered to be a sus2 arpeggio or a sus4 arpeggio, which is something we've talked about when we talked about writing better chord progressions in our acoustic lessons. But let me show you what's going on here. So for today, because we're playing with a different backing track, uh, again, this is available on the Guitar Interactive YouTube channel, so you can go and find that at your leisure. We'll post some links in the comments too. We're going to be in the key of C sharp minor. Now, this is fun because it also translates very well to E major, uh, where we get basically the same stuff. But anyway, let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So if we were to play in uh, our C-sharp minor pentatonic box one, this is a good place to do this sort of thing, we could get from the high string to the low string, just so everybody can play along, uh, we could get 12, 9, and then we could also have 12, 9 on the highest string. Let's turn that delay off, that's annoying. Then we could have 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, and then 12, 9 on the bottom. If I throw my backing track on, I'll just play that scale for you one more time. That's our C-sharp minor pentatonic scale. And we've all seen this a million times. And we have a tendency when we play pentatonic lines like this one, we have kind of a tendency as guitar players to kind of walk the scale. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is we tend to move between finger one and whatever finger is on this end of the hand. So you might get this sort of thing where we might start to walk between one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, three, one, four, three, one, four, one. You can even do it with all ones and threes. 
We've all done this sort of thing before, I'm sure. But we just kind of alternate. Kind of almost at random. Walking up and down the scale between this finger and either this finger or this finger, one or other. Now the cotton rudiment breaks this in a very interesting way, uh, and I actually think this is taken from Richie's bass playing. Richie's a fabulous bass player and a great drummer and keyboard player and singer, just all round clever sausage, um, which is not irritating in the slightest. Let me tell you, uh, and definitely something that inspired me to try and emulate that a little bit in my own musicianship. Got me to singing, got me to producing, playing bass. I'm still a terrible drummer and a terrible keyboard player, so you know we fall short of. Richie in many ways. But anyway, listen, so let's let's real quick talk about this rudiment and let's talk about it on the highest two strings. This is why we talked about it last week. So last week we talked about this idea of instead of playing like this, where we play, uh, for example, instead of playing three, one, three on our B string, these are our finger numbers, by the way, so it's 12, 9, 12, we would generally then go to finger number one, which is fret number nine on the high E string, which would give us this, right? We get this sort of idea. Which we've all played a million times. It doesn't sound bad by any stretch of the imagination. But what we can do instead with the Richie thing is instead of going to fret number nine with finger number one on our high E string, we can roll with our third finger to fret number 12 on the high E string. So we get this, we get 12, 9, 12, 12. Now, the way that I like to play this is I like to play it with my pick on the B string, my middle finger, hybrid picking, on the high E string. For modern Richie, you would do thumb and finger. Interestingly, he still does a lot of stuff, even though he doesn't hold a pick anymore, he still does a lot of stuff with thumb and middle finger from his good old hybrid picking days. Uh, but even still, I like to do hybrid picking. You can play it any way you want. You can pick the whole thing too. But what we might get is this. We might get... Now, if you've got your guitars, we're going to try playing this together. So grab your guitars if you haven't done so already. And here is the challenge for you, right? The challenge becomes how well can you make this transition from 12 to 12 clean? So let's throw the back track back on. Back track's already on. And let's go like this. Let's try playing. 12, 9, 12. And 12 on the high E. You can see me rolling my finger quite pronouncedly there. It's not a word. That's what you get on top. Effects. We're going to pick just the first note on the B string and do the rest with hammer-ons and pull-offs until it's time to hit the E string, which will be our middle finger. So let me know in the comments if you're getting that, if that's working for you. Let me know in the comments if that rudiment's working for you. If you have any questions about how to make it clean, drop those in the comments too, because I'm happy to answer those as we go. Again, we're going to be answering your questions as we go a little bit further. Now, to take this a little step deeper, I guess, what we can start to do is we can start to take this rudiment and we can start to move it to different pentatonic positions. Now, it doesn't have to be pentatonic. We talked last week about this idea of pentatonic superimposition. We can do it all over the place, but we can start to take this rudiment and then we can start to move it to different positions. Let me show you a couple of fun places where you might play it. So we might do, in this case, 12 and 9. We might also do it with our third finger on nine and then right here with our first finger on seven like this that works really well so that's a good place to begin so we could play here and then we can go here Both of which sound perfectly fantastic because we're in our uh, in our C sharp minor pentatonic scale. Gonna throw these questions up here, all these comments in here, real quick. Uh, Cranky Tom's got a great observation. Says works fine. That one reminds me of a bass fill in uh, a total bass fill in Africa. I know the one you're talking about. It's this bit. It's the Tell you what, I do, a, I do a, a, an arrangement of that with my three piece, and it's a nightmare because I decided I wanted to play this business. 
What's it called again? Ah, it's really hard. That's the one. Blimey, that is tough. Uh, I've got a little sloppy with that over the years. It is exactly like that bass fill in Africa. And you hear this with bass players quite a lot, this rolling thing. I think that's where Richie got the idea from. So uh, a little tidbit for this. If you watch the video for Pain Dues, um, where it's all like kind of live performance stuff, you can see him playing these licks in the bass solo, um, which is, is very, very cool. So uh, I want to throw these up here as well. Daryl Queens is that perfect fourth interval. is just different sounding enough, just different sounding enough in a sequence so that it scratches the ear in a great way. Totally agree. Totally agree agree it's not completely out of uh the ordinary but it does sound like kind of different enough to be cool and interesting uh say records layout says uh can't get sped up because the pull-off gets muddled uh we've got some interesting comments here so uh say record uh, sorry cow cat says maybe third finger under the fourth finger helps for alternative that can work too so that's this business so instead of doing the roll what we get instead is you might get this um, what you might also do is you might do uh, something where you actually pick the second note. So you could play with middle finger. I'll just hide this comment for a second. You could play middle finger, pick, pick with an upstroke, and then hammer on. That would take a little practice to get going, but once you get it... On we go. That's an interesting one. You can tell I do, I do this stuff all the time because these licks just kind of fall off my fingers because I've played them so much. Uh, they're just habitual, so please don't feel like if I'm just throwing that stuff in there, I'm like, oh no, you look at this. Uh, I don't mean to. Sometimes I just kind of do it without thinking. It's one of my kind of uh, break glass for shred licks. Uh, so that might be an option. Um, I would encourage you to stick with it though, Cow Cat. Um, not Cow Cat, rather, Sacred God Slayer, because this is a really useful skill. I think the uh, probably the best way to, to conceptualize this is to think about it as having the tip of the finger. This is some advice I was going to give you guys if you asked for it, uh, is to have the tip of the finger on the string that's doing the pulling off and then to get the pad of the finger. Don't feel like you have to get the tip of the finger on there. You can do it almost like a bar where you use the pad of the finger with a roll to get that high string. Now what you could also do there, which is kind of fun with the hybrid picking thing, this is the best bit about it, is you can play the same idea, but as soon as you've done the hybrid pick, your middle finger can go right back onto that string. Let me see if I can show you. I'll show you this in slow motion. So if I go like this. Did you see that? Keep an eye on the middle finger from this hand. Notice how it goes right back on there. So it's ready to go, ready to go for the hybrid pick, but it's also dampening the string, which takes care of needing to be super accurate with the roll on the way back. Um, we've got a question from Ergo Hog. Uh, I will address this in the Q&A section. It's a very, very good question. We're, we're gonna get to that. It's a great question. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> pardon me. Um, I don't know if it's, ah, here we go. I don't know if it's been covered, uh, but how the heck do you play the main riff uh, on Angel off the first Winery Dogs album? That's a good question, man. I'm gonna have to check that out myself because uh, I can't really speak on that with any great authority right now, but it's a very good question that I may need to check out. Uh, if I'm super clever, uh, I may be able to get some uh, some tab for you on this, but we'll see. Um, anyway, uh, Sacred God Slayer says, any other picking mechanic works well, but it's less economic. I agree, man. Uh, there might just be something and that's kind of a little alien uh, and takes a bit of time. I'll tell you another place where this may have come from, by the way. Uh, interestingly enough, is you guys know Richie's history with uh, Mr. Big. There is uh, a great version where he plays um, Green Tinted 60s Mind, uh, which is this guy. What's it called like? I forgot it now. Something like that. Now, Richie... Pl oh, Gonna throw myself under the bus here because I can't remember it, but he plays it uh, like this. Go... Something like that. Anyway, something like that, um, mainly because you got given the, the album to learn and didn't know it was tapping. But there's a lot of that lick.
-hmm. in that sort of stuff. So I guess part of this as well is maybe coming out of the 80s thing, uh, a good part of this is maybe doing the tapping thing or, or trying to do the tapping thing with hybrid picking. Anyway, listen, we're getting a little bit off course. So let's get back to this real quick. So what I want to do, I want to remind you of the two positions we're playing this in. We're playing this in uh, 12, 12 and 9 and then 9, 9, and 7. I'm going to throw the backing track on, and we're just going to play with this and see what we can get. So let's jam together. I'm going to throw the delay back on. I'm going to give you some space to experiment with this, and let's see what we get. So I'm going to go like this first of all. I'm going to play it nice and slow to begin with. I'll go... Notice I'm playing with maybe doubling up on... Certain parts of the phrase. Okay, you can take a turn. And you can take as long as you like with this. We're going to experiment with moving it between these two positions. If you have to stop, that's fine. But what you'll find at this kind of pace, my turn, is you'll find some places where slides work really well as transitional phrases transitional devices. You take a turn. Just start to speed it up here a little bit to show you what's going on, but don't feel like you have to play it at speed. That's not really the, the point of this. It's just to show you where we're going with this. So you can take a little, little bit longer. I'm going to show you another position we can do this in. Here we're going to do it on 14 and 12. Again, on the high is two strings. So what we might get is something like this, where we might get... does this stuff too as well. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you one more place we might do this. There are a few other places we can do it, but for this example, we might do 7, 7, and 5, which gives us this. You take a pass. Whatever you like with this, don't feel like you have to play at speed. That's not what this is about. It's not even you can do this like faster competition. Just showing you how this eventually turns into Richie. Because when well, it's a little slow, yes, it sounds cool. It's a fun phrasing device we can play with, but it doesn't necessarily sound like in store Richie. Whereas, you know, if we really, really kind of get uh, kind of up at speed with this stuff, which you'd be amazed how quick the speed comes with this sort of thing, we can really start to Richie it up. Uh, now, let's go a little bit deeper with this. So, what we've done so far is we've taken a bunch of positions that we can play with this. What I want to show you another little trick with this is that we can also use uh, any combination of position on the B string. Just to remind you, we have from the top to bottom, 14 to 12, and then 12 to 9, and then another one here, which is uh, 9 to 7, 7 to 5. Again, we're in C-sharp minor in case you've just tuned in. Could also think about this as being an E major uh, if you want to play some of that gorgeous ballad -y stuff. Um, it's another cool way to get that sort of stuff to do. It works great in E major as well. So what we can do is we can combine any combination of positioning on the low, on the B string, the lower of our two strings in this rudiment, with either the highest note available to us in the position, the lowest note available to us in the position, this is on the high E string, or even the high note from the next position up. So what we could do here is, remember we have this position up here. Well, we can keep our, four, our fourth finger ready to go on fret number 14, and we could play this 12-9 idea, and then stretch out to get 12-9-12-14. Now, we could also roll 
with our fourth finger. We can extend that roll up here, but we're not gonna worry about that just yet. Now, this is something that we can do here, which is a higher position. We can do it here. We can do it here. Wherever you want to find this, you can do this. So it's really, really useful and really fun. But the next thing we're actually going to do with this is we're going to start moving it across strings. So for this, we're going to go to, and we maybe put a lick together for this. We'll put something uh, really interesting together with this, hopefully. Anyway, I just want to show you this, by the way. Nick Harrison's got a great comment. This is my friend, Nick. Uh, Nick's a buddy, um, and he is my uh, guitar practice guru, let's say. Nick has really helped me uh, grow my playing over the years, uh, and he's just a great dude. You know, really, really good guy. Uh, fabulous musician. Uh, I think to call him a guitar player is a disservice, because uh, Nick's a, a player of all sorts of things. Guitar and piano primarily, uh, production, programming musical mind composer you name it anyway uh, this is one of those interval ideas which transcend almost all tempos uh, that you can play them without turning to scale motion I totally agree right so here's an interesting one scale motion accurately describes almost every improvisation pillar improvisation I've ever attempted ha 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 uh, totally agree I want to get back to this real quick um, with the timing uh, issue so we talked about the timing uh, on this being a thing what I'm gonna suggest to you with this is for the timing I wouldn't worry about the timing of individual notes. I would worry about creating an interesting sounding rhythm with the high notes. So if we just play some high notes, what I might get is something like this. So I might get something that would go. about that when I'm playing this stuff. I'm thinking about the rhythm on the high notes. In the same way, now this is an interesting thing, right? I think this is another aspect of Richie being a, a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, I think about the, the rhythm of the high notes in the same way that I think drummers, when they're doing these crazy fills that have like an accent pattern through them, think about these kind of like hand, hand, foot, foot coordination things. I'm not gonna mouth that out to you, but you know what I'm talking about. This, these fills where it's like hand, 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 foot, foot, hand, 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 foot, foot, hand, hand, foot, foot, that sort of thing. Like, digga, 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 digga. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't mouth that out at any kind of speed. Um, I think when drummers are doing this stuff, I think for the most part, they're thinking about the rhythm of the accent. So the accent might be on the right hand, it might be on a foot, who knows? But the leading accent, we're thinking about that. We're thinking about that going ga 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 and everything else will just kind of like fall in between the gaps. So that's kind of how I'm thinking about this sort of stuff. Here's an interesting one. It's an interesting one rather, and I think this has come from Richie being a fabulous drummer, among other things, but you notice this in uh, like Nuna Betancourt's playing as well. Um, and also a lot of guys who are like uh, like tappers, like Eddie Van Halen did a lot of this stuff. And again, Eddie, Nuno, uh, all drummers. Um, uh, Richie as well, drummers. So, you know, maybe play drums. Maybe that's the answer. Anyway, uh, so we're going to get away from this because we're going to transfer this across some strings. So we can do the transference across strings in any pentatonic position we so desire, but we're going to do it in C sharp minor box number uh, five. Now, this is the next one down from the one everybody plays, which is this. <laughs> This is where knowing your pentatonic shapes comes in handy. Uh, what we might do next is we're gonna go to this one. So we're gonna start here on fret number nine, which is our C sharp, we're in the key of C sharp minor. Let's turn the delay off, because it's annoying. We get nine, seven, nine, seven. On the middle two strings, it's nine and six. Nine and six, nine and seven, nine and seven. I've chosen this one, because it's actually quite easy to keep the top finger the same. So what we can get is something like this. There's a rudiment again. What we can do here is we can use the high string to mask the transition down to the next pair of strings. So here I'm playing nine, nine, six. So 
same thing again. Now, there's a couple of ways we can get to the next string. We can mask it with a roll and go like this. Uh, that's a string skipping thing. We'll get to that in a second. Or what we can do is when we get to the bottom of the rudiment, we can just continue walking the scale down. So what we might get is this. We might get on the high E string, nine, nine, seven, nine, 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 seven, nine. Once again, nine, nine, seven, G string, nine, six, nine. And then we're rolling on our next set of strings. We can catch that next move for the D string by walking down and then beginning the roll of new, which gives us this. Undoubtedly, we've heard Richie play a thousand times, I'm sure, but what we might get if we put the back track on very quickly is we may get something like this. Just to throw it together, show you what this is all adding up to, we could get this transitional movement. Across our positions, again, this is fast, I understand, and you know, I'm not expecting you to play it at this kind of speed, this kind of speed, just to show you where we're going with this. But we can get that and we can go. Transition across the strings. If we combine that with our reaching to the next position on the highest string of our string pair, we become infinitely richy with just pentatonic scale, which is loads of fun, right? Loads and loads of fun. So I'm going to let you ruminate on that for just a minute. I've got something I want to show you, but when we come back, we're going to be doing another concept that we're going to throw into the mix here. And I'm going to show you one note, uh, one note that you can immediately add to your pentatonic playing and get some uh, real kind of magic. It's not even necessarily richy. Somebody mentioned Steve Lukather in the comments. Uh, this is kind of a Luke trick as well. It's something a lot of guitar players with a jazz leaning will touch on. It's one note, literally one note that we can throw into the mix to really kind of set this stuff on fire. And we'll get to that in a second. But before we do, I want to take a second to show you this. This is, uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more, not so much about the technical aspect of your guitar playing, but a little bit about the, um, I guess, the musical aspects and kind of learning how to... Uh, how to string notes together in interesting ways to create these modal sounds that go a little bit beyond the pentatonic. If you know the pentatonic scale, but you're a little baffled by modes, we have a course for that. And the course is Mastering Modes Part 1. It's right here. When we come back, we'll be talking a little bit about one magical note and then some chromatic ideas. So stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> Modes. What are modes? How do I use them? When do I use them? Well, modes are one of the things that the pros use to add excitement and colour to their guitar parts, and there is no reason why you can't use them too. Now, for some reason, people, especially certain online guitar teachers, love to make modes seem complicated and scary, but I'm here to tell you they really, really aren't. And in fact, if you know the pentatonic scale, I can show you how to play modes with just two extra notes. In this course, I'll show you how to play killer sounding guitar solos using modes without any of the mystery. You'll learn how to play musical sounding solos all across the neck in any key, crucially without sounding like you're just running up and down scales. So, if you're ready to take this next step with me, click the link to find out more.
That's Mastery Modes Part 1. If you want to learn a little more, a little more about that, blah, 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 mush mouth, a little more about that, you can go to this URL, guitarinteractivemagazine.com forward slash GI+. Links down below, you'll get more lessons like that. In case you're wondering, there's plenty of gurning on that, uh, that solo there. I do get accused of this sometimes. It's really interesting. I get accused of looking like I'm bored when I'm doing these streams and looking like I'm reading a book or something. What I'm doing is I'm reading the stream because we're, you know, yeah, you guys are chatting and I'm reading it while I'm, you know, while I'm playing. So yeah, I, I, I am not bored, I promise, uh, but I'm paying attention to what you guys are saying. So, you know, in case you're wondering, we've had a few folks have actually said this in the comments, go, Nick looks like he's reading a book when he's playing these solos. I'm like, I, I, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm reading what you guys are going to say. Uh, anyway, so listen, let's get away from that for a second. Uh, I want to show you one note. Uh, and this is a really cool and interesting note that leads us down a whole rabbit hole of interesting chromatic ideas. But the note is this, I'm going to play it for you and I'll show you how bad it sounds when you put it out of context. The note in this case, Case, dear friends, is going to be D, which is fret number 10 on our high E string. It sounds thus horrendous, absolutely awful. However, if we take this 10th fret note, which is a flat 9 interval, and we move it from flat 9 to our major 9, which is up here on fret number 11, well, all of a sudden, we've got something really nice. take one thing away from this stream, right? When you're playing pentatonic solos, you want to sound expensive. Just throw that note in there, right? Throw that note in there. You run the risk of playing the lick. Uh, uh, what's it more like? But it's where that comes from. Very, very cool line. Incidentally, here's a fun factoid for you, by the way, you music theory nerds out there. We talked last week about pentatonic superimposition, uh, and we talked about the idea of the um, playing the pentatonic from the fifth. So if we were to play, um, for example, G sharp minor pentatonic. of our C-sharp minor, G-sharp minor pentatonic over the top of the C-sharp minor, well, this note that we've just thrown in here is the blue scale note from, <laughs> it's the blue scale note from our, um, our fifth, our pentatonic fifth away. So what we're actually playing here is we're playing G-sharp blues, uh, which is... sounds fantastic in context like this. And away we go with all of the Guthrie of them. Guthrie-isms, uh, which is perhaps another story for another day. I'm not brave enough to take that on just yet because boy, that's kind of a Mount Olympus and I'm not ready to claim just yet. But anyway, um, what we can take from this is this sounds really cool, but we start to hear it interwoven into these rudiment lines that our man Richie plays. Uh, Response Audio has got a great comment here. There's adding the flat line. Yes, uh, no such thing as bad note, only bad resolution for sure. Jacob Collier uh, had a really, really great thing to say about this, where he said something along the lines, I'm going to paraphrase him here, something along the lines of um, you, there are no bad notes, you just lack confidence. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, kind of agree with that. I mean, heard some pretty bad notes, played some pretty bad notes over the time, but I understand the sentiment and it's kind of true. It's like, you know, there are no bad notes. It's just 
uh, it's just what you do with them, I guess. In the same way, there are no bad flavors in uh, in cooking, apart from cucumber. Cucumbers are terrible. Anyway, uh, cucumbers aside, so um, I don't like cucumbers. Um, but anyway, um, not in the sense that the Undertaker doesn't like cucumbers or cats don't like cucumbers. I just don't like the taste very much. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> so moving away from this, right? What we've just, what we gleaned from this is that we can throw this note in here and have it sound pretty cool kind of willy-nilly. Now, what we can also do with this is we can take our cots and rudiments. We can take these little cells of pentatonic that we're playing here. This is maybe one for you shredders out there, but even still. We can take these and we can just fill them in with chromatic notes. heart's content. Now, if you do this and you're not 100% sure what it is you're trying to play, you can um, you can quickly tie yourself a knot. So I'd encourage you to spend some time doing the thing that we do when we practice this stuff, which is to play it real slow and find some interesting paths through the scale using these chromatic ideas. Now, I'm going to show you what this might sound like, and we'll do a little bit of jamming back and forward. So slow, what we might get is this. I might take this cell... places where I can play just a handful of notes that fill in the space. What I might then do is I might then look for it across some strings like this. Absolutely bonkers licks. Now, as far as what's actually going on here, I'm gonna go out on a limb, right? Now, this is not it's not true, but it is kind of true. What actually happens in between these pentatonic notes in this sense doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what goes on inside the pentatonics, as long as it's all contained within these pentatonic cells, you're gold your gold. Now you could take this a step further and you could do the pentatonic substitution thing that we talked about where we sub the pentatonic for the G uh, or the fifth away in this case is G sharp minor and do the same deal again but what I'm doing is I'm imagining this pentatonic idea, I'm imagining this pentatonic as a framework and just plugging the gaps with any old nonsense and I mean any old nonsense, this is not particularly for thought out, uh, but it sounds cool. Now, the thing to be aware with this is that it is going to sound tense and it's going to sound a little bit out, but because you've always got the pentatonic fixed in your head, you can easily back out of the nastiness and just start playing pentatonic again, um, which is kind of where the, uh, the craziness, if you want to call it that, it's where we justify the crazy playing is by getting out and playing those nice notes. Again, there are no bad notes only bad resolutions. So this is not something that I can show you how to do in the space of 10 minutes, but it is something that I can kind of, uh, I guess I can give you the permission to do, for want of a better word. Um, don't feel like you have to understand exactly the context of these chromatic notes. You kind of don't. What you have to understand is the context of the big frame that they're being set among, and then just go crazy. Just have some confidence, some reckless abandon. Again, we say this all the time. You guys watch me make mistakes on these streams all the time. Musicians make mistakes. We're not glorifying sloppy playing here, but mistakes happen. It's music. Nobody dies, right? You know, if you make a mistake, you play a note that you didn't like, cool. You've learned something. You've learned that you didn't like that note. And you can choose to do something with that information. Uh, you can either choose to remember it and go, I'm never playing that again in that context. Or you can choose to go, oops, never mind move on either is fine uh here's a cool one from uh from cow cat uh right here it says um 
uh, what's it saying? Uh, SOV, I'm going to go back to the comment from Keith MOF in a second. Uh, SOV playing his trademark uh, flat nine nine trick, but while being on acid, he plays the pentatonic a fifth above. Um, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's basically it. You're playing the pentatonic a fifth above. It's the blue scale uh, a fifth away, but it's this famous trick. Little Hendrix at the end there. Which sounds fantastic. It's a great sounding lick. Uh, now, interestingly enough, if you want to go a step further with this, depending upon which modal scale you're in, you can go another fifth away with the pentatonic two. So if we're playing Dorian, for example, we could go um, uh, to, uh, we're not playing Dorian here. We're playing Aeolian, but even still, uh, we could do, it, it's a bit tenuous in Aeolian. Uh, it's a funny one with that one. But if we're doing Dorian, we could do C sharp, to G sharp to uh, D sharp. So it would be D sharp in this context, which is a terrible name for the key. And play the blues uh, scale there as well. Which in this context gives us license to play five, flat six, six. And there we get some blue stuff. Now this is again something you'll hear in Richie's playing. You'll hear him do that blue scale thing uh, two fifths away, which works out as being a tone up uh, for some Dorian context. It's a very, very cool thing. Uh, Keith MOF says, um, it's just a different way of thinking. Sadly, I feel like I've been playing Blinkered. Dude, we all have this moment. Believe me, we have several of these moments uh, over the course of your playing, let me tell you. Uh, Daryl Queen says, the craziness uh, played next to a more cliche lick makes the cliche lick feel uh, fresh again. It's like adding a bit of salt to the dish. You are 100% right, man, and that is the purpose of the crazy stuff. The purpose of the crazy stuff is not to play just crazy stuff for crazy stuff's sake. It's to give some freshness and give some new context to ideas that we already like. Now, I'm going to quote Guthrie Govan here, where he said, nothing ever became cliche by being bad. Um, things are cliche because they're good and we like them and we like them a bit too much. Um, think about this in a food analogy. Do you know how many times have you had a food dish that fundamentally, food dish, a dish that fundamentally boils down to uh, carb, tomato, cheese, maybe meat? So many of them out there, right? It's cliche because it's good. But sometimes what we want is we want a little bit of something interesting on there. We want some, uh, gee, I don't know, we want some olives. Or we want some, I can tell I'm hungry, can't you? Anyway, I'm going to get away from that. So listen, we've got some, uh, some time to do some questions. If you have questions, drop them down below. I would love to answer them. I've dropped my pick, so... Uh, oh, no, I have got another one. I was going to say, if I drop my pick, I would... Uh, I'll play without it for a little while. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do a little bit of that. Timothy Appling says, this definitely helps me from sounding like my lead is stuck in the 70s plus or minus a decade. Nothing wrong with that, man. There's some great guitar playing came out the 70s plus or minus a decade, let me tell you. But this is a really cool and like uh, a very richy way to modern up your playing. Now, the interesting thing about this is this particular approach, because it's rooted in pentatonic, this is kind of where, it, where it's a little bit magic, is because you have the pentatonic outlining this stuff, it still kind of sounds like rock and blues it doesn't sound like like out there fusion chromatic or it doesn't sound like the steve morse thing which is also cool where we play just straight chromatics up and down it doesn't sound like a just like really bizarre um like holdsworth-esque stuff i guess where it's just like or sean lane where it's just like like really blurry, crazy, bizarre tonality. Sean understood exactly what was going on with that, as did Holdsworth. Uh, but because the pentatonic is there as the is the big framework, it still has this air of rock blues about it. You just sound like a clever rock player, if that makes sense. So I'm going to play a little bit, um, and then when we come back, we're going to answer your questions. Uh, so if you've got questions, drop them down below. Let me just give you one more quick example of this, and then I'm going to show you a course, and then we'll come back to do some questions real quick. So that's some real extreme examples. Let's do this with uh, Daryl Queen's example of setting cliches against some craziness.
loads and loads of fun to be had there. Listen, I want to take a quick second to show you this. This is another one of the courses that's available on GI+. Plus. This one uses this back of track, which shows you how to be expressive. It's called Expressive Techniques Part 1. When we come back, we're going to do a petite little Q&A session. I'll see you in about two minutes. Hi guys, Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive and GI+. Plus. Does your playing sound like this? When really you'd like it to sound like this? Now, the difference between these two examples are not the notes that are being played, but rather the way the notes are being played. I'm sure you've heard this before. Guitar players will say to you, it's not what you play, it's how you play it. And when it comes to creating interesting, emotive, and musical sounding guitar lines, that is very much the case. And in this course, Expressive Techniques Part 1, we aim to equip you with the tools to sound more musical, more emotive, more interesting, and ultimately more expressive on the guitar. And we are gonna do this by exploring the three principal left hand expressive techniques, which are slides, bends, and vibrato. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of these techniques and how you can execute them cleanly, efficiently, and reliably. I'll also give you some exercises to help develop these techniques. And we're also gonna discuss some musical applications, how you might use these techniques in your own playing. We're gonna go into great depth with that stuff. And I'm also gonna give you a solo study, a piece of music I've prepared. And I'm gonna encourage you and kind of guide you through the process of applying expression to an otherwise expressionless and bare sounding piece of guitar playing. So at the end of this course, you are gonna be able to take otherwise uninteresting and fairly dry pieces of music and turn them into expressive, colorful, musical lines. And you're also gonna be able to take this and apply it to your own playing or to other people's music that maybe you're playing and you want to express in your own way. This is Expressive Techniques Part One. My name is Nick Jennison for Guitar Interactive and GI Plus. I hope you'll join me. I will see you in there. So that's Expressive Techniques Part 1, also available as part of your GI Plus membership. Look at that, there's a URL where you can go and get GI Plus memberships. Uh, they're good, you'll like them. Anyway, so let's get very quickly stuck into the Q&A. Uh, I will try not to waffle as much as I can, um, but I want to uh, quickly highlight this. We've got a great, uh, great, 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 great um, question from Mark Crandall with regard to mastering modes, which I'm going to clarify for you guys as we go. So, okay, so the concept behind mastering modes part one is it is a, an introduction it's a first step into the pen, into uh playing modes using the pentatonic scale as your framework and what we do is we begin by using um we begin by using the, pen, the pentatonic scale box one in the key of c and then we append a number of extra notes to it uh that uh will turn it into a modal scale into a modal sound, if you will, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it gives you uh, kind of training wheels in your playing, where you can uh, you know you can add certain notes to the pentatonic licks that you already have. Um, if that makes sense. Because we've got some questions here. I'm, I'm going to address this like properly. I'll show you exactly what's going on. So Mark, stick with me. Uh, and you guys may get some cool insight out of this too. Um, so basically, it gives you some training wheels where you can take a pentatonic scale, which might be something like this. Let's say... which is C major pentatonic. 
and then we can throw notes like this in. To turn it into Mixolydian, we can throw notes like this, turn it into Lydian. works is that at the heart of each of the um, at the heart of each of the the major modes which are mixed Lydian Lydian uh, Ionian not in that order is a major pentatonic scale you will find a major pentatonic scale within all three of these scales we can also find a minor pentatonic scale within the heart of the three minor modes now because the minor pentatonic and the major pentatonic share fingerings we can use the same additive fingerings i.e. we can add the same notes to our pentatonic scale to get something that sounds like a modal scale. And we can actually use the same fingerings here. So what um, Mark is referring to is uh, he's saying if you were to take the C minor pentatonic scale, which is this, and throw in this note, and this note, for example, get C Phrygian. If we take the same fingering shape, which is our C minor pentatonic, and we move it down three frets, we get C major pentatonic. If we then add the same additional fingers, let's say we were going to add a first finger note, uh, sorry, a second finger note on the high string, second finger note on the next string, we would get C mixed Lydian. Same thing here, same fingering. Up three frets, we get Phrygian. Now, the way this works, um, so Mark, you are correct. Um, the, the reason why you guys in the stream may be going, Ooh, I don't think that's right, uh, is because this is all to do with the way the modes are presented in mastering modes, um, which is, uh, again, I, I'm careful to stress this, right? This is not the only way to, it's not the way to look at this stuff. It is a pentatonic centric, guitar player centric, easy introduction to this stuff. It's a way of sounding musical as well, like straight off the bat. Not to say that other approaches don't sound musical, of course they do, that's absolutely not, that, that would be foolish of me to say, but that's kind of where this idea comes from. Now, the reason this works is because within each of these uh, subsets of major and minor modes, we have three uh, levels of brightness we can play with. So in our major modes, we have Lydian, which is the brightest mode, uh, Ionian, which is the middle of the three, and then Mixed Lydian, which is the darker of the three. You may think about them as major bright, major natural, and major dark. It's not their names, but you might think about them like that. Um, you might also then think about uh, the minor modes, which are Dorian, Aeolian, and Phrygian, as being minor bright, minor natural and minor dark. Here's a fun thing though. So Aeolian and <laughs> Aeolian and Ionian, which are the major, the minor and major scales respectively, are relative to each other. We know about the idea of A minor and C major having the same notes, but the brighter of our major scales are also relative to each other. So C Lydian and A Aeolian are relative, sorry, say that again, C Lydian and A Dorian are relative in the same way that C major and uh, and the same with the C major and A minor are relative. Likewise, the darker ones, which would be C mixolydian and A phrygian, are also relative in the same way. Which means we can, based around box number one, pentatonic box number one, we can use just three fingerings to get all six 
sounds, if that makes sense. So, Mark Randall, you are correct, but let me show you some other people who are also correct. Um, here we go, right? Uh, G Mix Lydian uh, is C major. Yes, it contains the same note as C major, so that is correct, sort of. Uh, C Mix is not C major, uh, C Ionian is C major. Uh, you're kind of right. It's major in the sense that it's a major mode. You are right. You are right. It's not C major uh, in the sense that it's not the major scale, but it does have, it's a major sounding mode. Uh, technically a dominant mode, but we'd group it in the category of major modes in that it contains a major pentatonic at its core and a major triad at its core as well. This is why this stuff gets kind of confusing, right? Let me tell you. So uh, I guess the best advice I can give you is uh, if you are, if you have a deep and well-seated understanding of this, don't change it on my account. If, however, what you want is you want um, an easy insight into this stuff, uh, that is kind of a, a first step. You'll find probably a very, very good one in the Mastering Modes Part 1 course available as part of your GI Plus membership. Um, now, I will say once again, because I've got to carry out this stuff, right? Because when you present stuff like this, it's very important to, to understand that what I'm not presenting is the entirety of this and going all this other stuff about, you know, G major, sorry, uh, C major, uh, it's, what am I saying? Uh, yeah, G mix Lydian is C major, all that other stuff. I'm definitely not saying that's false. It's true. Uh, I'm also not saying that it's unuseful. It is useful. It's maybe just not useful yet. Um, there are many perspectives that you can take on this stuff. And I feel that oftentimes guitar players are presented with the wrong one first because the pentatonic is so much of a thing. Now, uh, with Mark Randall, he's apologised for taking up the Q&A. Do not apologise, my man. That was my choice to take up the Q&A because I really wanted to clarify that stuff right away. So, yes, you are barking up the right tree there. Uh, I would say so. Uh, and everybody wants to know a little more about the perspective we're taking on this. Mastering modes is the place to find it. Uh, it's not a secret knowledge, right? This is it's not some kind of crazy thing I've made up, right? It's quite common knowledge. It's just a, a pre presenting one perspective on it sooner rather than presenting another perspective. Anyway, uh, it's an interesting conversation, uh, Daryl Queen. I absolutely agree, for real. Uh, so listen, we've got one more question. Uh, I want to take a quick second to show this uh, to you guys. This is from our friend Ergo Hog. Uh, what's the best uh, practice for shifting positions and good timing with this rolling technique? I'm going to give you a very quick but very, very uh, all-encompassing answer is to do it at, uh, do it with a fixed um, rhythm. So three back and track on. Back and tracks are fun for this. You can do metronomes too. But if we have a rhythm like this, you might pick eighth notes, which is what we're clicking in now. And I would practice. Still got C in my mind. Practice moving through positions by improvising and finding ways that you like to move through the positions and interesting ways to move through positions while keeping rigid timing so the timing stays constant. This would be something that we might refer to as the rhythmic framework of limitations. You can change the timing as you go further through your practice. So you might change it triplets. But either way, we're sticking very rigidly with timing I realized that was kind of a broken up way of, uh, of saying that because uh, let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, trying to play that and trying to talk is a, is a challenge in and of itself. Uh, I want to say on here real quick, um, we got another quick one from Mark Randall. There's uh, so many ways to look at it all, so much to learn. I totally agree, man. Uh, it, you could study a lifetime for this and never uh, come across every possible perspective on this, but I guess the most important with this is that... Uh, to understand there is a plurality of perspectives uh, when it comes to music theory, there are also a plurality of music theories in the world. Um, Western music theory is not the only music theory. Um, so, But it's the one we're dealing in because we're dealing with uh, 12, um, I guess, 12 notes. Uh, how can 12 notes be so complex? Uh, for sure. So anyway, with regards to these perspectives, you probably will need them all at some point, but you don't need them all right away. Uh, you just need a useful in. You need a way to get in and start making music with this stuff, start appreciating the sounds, and then you'll actually draw connections that will lead you to the other perspective over time. So um, by fiddling with this stuff, by going, 
How does this work? Let me show you an easy way to get into this. The more you then explore that stuff, the more you'll start to draw conclusions of your own and these other perspectives will come to you. Because these perspectives, they're all useful, they're all really interesting. Um, and you will need them all at some point, but you don't need them all to make music. You don't need any of them to make music. You can make music with none of them. This is just a fun way to expand your musical palette uh, and a fun way to uh, engage in this thing that we like to do, which is trying to master this weird instrument that we all like. Anyway, listen, uh, a final thought. Uh, here we go. Uh, music theory is also in a state of evolution. It isn't fixed. 100% agree. Uh, great comment from Keith MOF. Thank you so much for this, Keith. Uh, brilliant information and learning so much technique. Off to buy more brain brain cells tomorrow you can have a few of mine uh i think uh i think they're a bit worn out though anyway listen i'm gonna play a little bit more uh my name is nick jennison for guitar interactive gi plus thank you so much for sticking around hopefully that's been a little bit more of an enlightening uh corollary to our richie cotton stream last week don't forget you can go back and watch that too it's on our youtube channel i'll be posting the tab for this lick live stream hub so yep guitar interactive uh live stream hub i'll write this out post it after the end of this stream but for the time being i'm going to play a little more of this track we'll play some crazy stuff hopefully we'll see and then some not so crazy stuff too but for the time being my name is nick jennison i will see you guys next monday 8 p.m uk time or if you prefer you can come and catch me tomorrow 7 p.m same place for me but it's going to be on the lick library youtube channel so uh that's 7 p.m until 7 30 it's a 30 minute live uh webinar we'll be talking about what lessons are appropriate for you uh so hopefully i'll see you over there that's on the lick library uh youtube channel my name is nick jennison the guitar interactor gi plus i will see you next week take care of yourself here's the back of track let's go Tuned. I've been bending so much that my strings are out. I'm gonna fix that for the time being. This is what you get as part of your GI Plus membership. My name's Nick Jennings from Guitar Interactive. See you next week. My name is Nick Jennison and it's a pleasure to introduce to you GI Plus, the brand new lesson platform brought to you by Guitar Interactive. We've assembled a team of the best players and educators in the world to bring you exclusive lessons covering everything from metal to blues to fusion and everything in between. Want to level up your shred chops? Check out How to Play Fast by Andy James. Or how about Sweet Picking with Rick Graham? Or maybe Country's more your bag? Well, how about a full-length exclusive country guitar course from Andy Wood? Interested in learning how to play over changes? Well, members get access to hours of exclusive lessons from fusion maestro Tom Quayle. Or maybe you want your playing to sound more soulful. Well, who better than Chris Buck to show you how it's done? Or perhaps you want to learn the secrets of the masters. Well, members get access to over 60 feature-length tech sessions where our tutors painstakingly decode the styles of players like David Gilmour, Eddie Van Halen, John Petrucci, Larry Carlton, Flash. 
Tosh Nabati, Paul Gilbert, and many more. You get all this along with exclusive live webinars, free backing tracks, competitions, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for GI Plus today. Hi, my name is Ian Simmel and I'd like to share with you my course on slide guitar for standard tuning. This is a 10 part series in which we're going to explore the essential slide hand techniques and pick and hand techniques. We're also going to take a look at rhythm playing with the slide. So we're going to look at how to integrate the slide with major and minor triads. enjoyed putting this series together. It comes complete with some backing tracks for all of the example phrases and exercises so you can practice along and it comes complete with tablature and notation for all the example phrases and exercises. So if you've been interested in getting into slide I highly encourage you to check out this course, this 10 part series on slide guitar for standard tuning.